Okay, so what we're going to try to do in this video is to try to explain how the directions and the sign of the shearing stress on rotated stress states work using more circle. So first of all, I have in the center of the screen a circle that I've drawn with more circle. Now in our class, we plot positive tau downward. Some people call that a counterclockwise rotation on the positive x face. Uh, and the negative tau is upward, and the sigma is the horizontal axis. Now, on my little block that I have up in the upper left-hand corner, we have a few different ways that we can configure these stresses. We're going to do a couple of examples. Let's just first start out that assuming that sigma x is greater than sigma y and tau xy is positive, and we'll take a look and see what kind of uh, stresses we get for that. Okay, so I'm going to put my arrowhead this way and this way, and positive tau xy. So these are all my arrowheads that I have for equilibrium. And this is going to be my sigma x, my sigma y, and my tau xy. And um, so like I said, we're going to make tau xy greater, uh, excuse me, sigma x greater than sigma y, and we're going to make uh, tau xy be positive. We're going to plot our more circle points. Now, I'm assuming that at this point you've already discussed more circle. Have you seen my other videos? You've had the other lectures, and you know how to plot the more circle. You know how to find the radius and the angle, uh, two theta p. But we'll kind of go over those a little bit. So in general, we plot three points when we do our more circle. We plot what we call the x point, which is sigma x comma tau x y, the y point which is sigma y comma minus tau xy in the center of the circle, which is sigma average comma zero, where sigma average is the average of the two in-plane stresses, sigma x plus sigma y over two. So if these are the cases, sigma x greater than sigma y uh, and tau xy greater than zero, we're going to plot our x point over here, maybe in this location. It's going to be to the right of the center, and it's going to be downward positive. And our y point is going to be directly across from it, I'll just label it over here. What I'm going to try to do is see this red line that I have. I'm going to try to rotate that if I can grab it. Spin that around to that location. And we have our X and our Y point right there. Now, the angle of rotation to the horizontal axis on the circle is two times the principal angle theta p. So the angle from here to here is what we call two theta p. The way that we can find that angle is if we drop down a vertical line right here. We know this height is the same as the magnitude of tau xy. And we know this distance, this leg right here, is sigma x minus sigma average. Since this is a right angle, you can find that radius as uh, sigma x minus sigma average squared plus tau xy squared is equal to the radius squared. Now the furthest most right point over here and the furthest most left point over there, we're going to call the principal stresses. So you see, that's the furthest we can get along the sigma axis. And the values of those can be found by simply taking the average plus the radius and the average minus the radius. And the coordinate of that point, since it lies on the sigma axis, uh, on the right, it's sigma p1, comma 0. And over here on the um, left side, it's sigma p2, comma 0. Okay, so now the question arises, how do we rotate our original stress block to show that it goes to the principal stress state? Now here's how we deal with that. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take that red line and line it up with the horizontal axis of our Mohr circle. So let's see if I can do this. Maybe uh, it's going to be difficult to do that. Uh, let's see. Let me draw a new line. I lost my uh, setup on this, but let me um, let me see what I can do here. I want to 
think I can still do it. Let me pause this video for a second. Let me draw a new line. Okay, I have this green line on top of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and I'm going to rotate it until it lines up with the horizontal axis of my Mohr circle. As I do that rotation, which, watch which way that I go. I don't want to say up or down. I want to say clockwise or counterclockwise. If you notice, I am spinning this, and I'm spinning it around in a counterclockwise sense to get to that horizontal axis. And one more time, spinning it until I get to the horizontal axis. Okay, what that means then is when I go over to my stress element or my stress block, I go in the same sense of rotation. So I'm over here. Here's my x-axis. I also go in that same sense of rotation. But the angle is half as much physically in the material. So this is the angle theta p. Now my stress block then, in the principal stress state, notice how I'm rotating my axes. It's going to have my principal stresses on it. We can figure out which stress goes where by watching where our x and y points land after the rotation. See, this x point traveled to this position. In this case, it travels to sigma p1. So that means the stress that used to be in the x direction is now the sigma p1 stress on this picture. And the stress that used to be at this position, at the sigma y position, travels down to here to sigma p2 as we do that rotation. So this will be sigma p2. All right, so the, that's the principal stress state. The principal stress state does not have any shearing stress. The principal stress state, we can tell that it doesn't have any shearing stress through more circle because that the second coordinate pair here is zero. That's the value of the shearing stress. By definition, principal stress states do not have any shearing stress. But we can see that also from the Mohr circle by the coordinates of those two principal stress points. All right, now the, the next point we want to take a look at is the maximum shearing stress state. Let me pause the video for a second. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. and. Um, uh, then I'll be able to uh, put another color, I think, for this line. All right, so let's talk about the maximum shearing stress state, how to find the directions of the shearing stress arrows. So I have uh, next to that red line for my original starting stress state, I have a pink line. I'm going to rotate that. And if you remember what we just did, we went from that red line to the horizontal direction of our Mohr circle by doing a counterclockwise rotation. And now we have a choice. We can take this and we can rotate it, continuing on in the same direction up to the vertical, 90 degrees on the Mohr circle. Or we can be here and we can rotate it the other way, the other sense of rotation, to where at the, the bottom of the circle with the right-hand point of our line. We are free to choose whichever way we want to do. And in fact, we'll do both. But it's going to be easier for me this time, uh, initially. Uh, let's go from our original XY diameter to the horizontal diameter, back down to the bottom. OK, so it's going to be right here. All right, so follow what we did. We went from this red line to here. And then we took this point down to the bottom. Let's draw that on here. Okay. So we went here. First we went counterclockwise. Now we're reversing course and we're going clockwise down to this spot right here. Now the coordinate of this point down at the bottom of the circle is sigma average comma r. And the the point up here is sigma average comma minus r. It's sigma average because the center of the circle is located at sigma average. It's plus or minus r. That's as far as we can get along the tau axis. So that's the maximum in-plane shearing stress. Okay, so let's follow what we did. First we went 
counterclockwise, and now we're going to draw a line that is clockwise. 90 degrees on the circle means 45 degrees on the, on the block. Let's find a new color here. Um, let's see. We had kind of a pink colored line, so let's try to find pink. Let me go over here. Okay. So from here to here is 45 degrees. Now, the book may actually, if you look at the odd numbered problems, the book may actually have a negative of the number that's 45 minus theta p. Okay, so keep that in mind if you see their answer. Okay, so now we have our stress block. that is in the maximum shearing stress directions. Okay, now here's, here's the deal with the normal stresses. Let's do those first. Both of those normal stress values are sigma average on both sets of faces. So both of these are sigma average. And now here's the tricky part. We need to get the sign of the shearing stress correct. We need to get the arrow in the right direction for our shearing stress. Now watch what we did again. We went from our X to the principal stress state, and then we went from our, you know, back through here, through our X point, and down here to the bottom. As we rotate the circle around, these values are changing for the principal stress, or for the sigmas, until they reach the principal stress value. The tau is also changing. It is getting smaller and smaller until it approaches zero. Now, we started out with a positive shearing stress. We saw, said that from the beginning. Started out with a positive shearing stress. And unless I cross over the horizontal axis, I don't change the sign of the shearing stress. Okay, so if I went to touch it to zero, it went to zero. But then when I go back this way, it stays positive. So I end up with a positive shearing stress. Positive shearing stress points in the positive X face in a positive Y direction. And so this would be our maximum in-plane shearing stress, which would be the radius of our 2D circle. All right. Now, if I had rotated the other way, I'm not going to drag that around, but if I would have started here and I would have continued on this way, now I have crossed over to the other side of the axis. Instead of having my line coming down, my line would be going the other way. Those two pink lines are supposed to be 90 degrees apart. It would be 45 degrees from the green line, the principal axis, so 90 degrees apart that way. Again, we'd have sigma average all the way around. And now we need to determine the direction of our shearing stress arrow. Okay, now I started with my X point that was positive with the shearing stress. I went to my principal stress state where I had zero shearing stress. And now I've moved over to the negative side of the tau axis, and I move all the way up to the top. So I have a negative shearing stress. A negative shearing stress will physically point in this direction. It's on the positive X face. It's in the minus Y direction. Once I have one of those, I have all of those in equilibrium, and I will ask that you draw all of those to illustrate equilibrium. The value of this shearing stress is the radius of the circle, and that's what we call the maximum in-plane shearing stress. Okay, now this might be a little confusing because we said one way we had a positive shearing stress, the other way we had a negative shearing stress. But if we look at the kind of the global direction of these arrows, Look at this arrow right here and this arrow right here. This line and this line are the same face. These arrows are pointing in the same global direction as are all the other shearing stress arrows. So it does not matter which way you rotate on a Mohr circle. As long as you are careful with the direction of rotations and how that affects the sign, then you'll get the same looking stress block or stress element 
uh, no matter which way you go. All right, so hopefully that clears things up. I'm going to do another example here where uh, we have sigma, uh, let's do tau xy negative, but everything else positive. So let me pause this. I'll clean this up just a little bit. We'll go a little bit faster on the next round. All right, so here's my stress block. Tau xy is negative when we have sigma x greater than sigma y. Let's plot our points. Uh, we talked about how we plot them and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this red line that I have here until I get it to the right spot. Okay, oops. Now since tau xy is negative, my x point is going to plot over in this quadrant. And by all that same process, I can find the angle 2 theta p. And now notice uh, which direction this is going. Oops, I drew the arrow head in the wrong way. From the red line to the horizontal line is 2 theta p. Okay, so. What that means over here then is from the horizontal axis, I go in a clockwise sense of rotation by the angle of theta p over on this block. Here's my stress block. There's my rotated coordinate system. This x point travels to sigma p1, so that's why that is sigma p1. The y point travels to sigma p2 at the same time. That's why it's sigma p2. Okay, now I have a choice. So I went here. I can continue on in the same sense of rotation, or I can travel back the other way to get to my maximum shearing stress state. The maximum shearing stress state is the vertical diameter of my Mohr circle. Use the blue line right here. Let's continue on in the same sense of rotation. So I went from here to here, and then I'm going to go down to the bottom. Now, if you notice, I started with a negative shearing stress, and I crossed over the axis. So now I'm changing it to a positive shearing stress. I go 45 degrees in the material because it's half as much as what it is on the circle. There's my coordinate system. I have sigma average all the way around. And now I said I start out with a negative shearing stress, but now I have a positive shearing stress. So that's what it looks like. Positive shearing stress points in a positive y direction on the positive x face. And that will be the value of the radius of my circle. If I wanted to go the other way, let me use a different color. If I wanted to go from my x point to here, from the principal stress state, it's 45 degrees. I draw this block, sigma average all the way around. And now I started with a negative shearing stress. And I'm going to the top of the circle where I have negative tiles. So I have a negative shearing stress which points in this direction. All I need is one of them for equilibrium. And again, if you notice, in the overall point of view, these two shearing stress arrows on the upper right of the block point in the same direction. And it doesn't matter which way you go. All right, let's do uh, another one or two real quick. Let's do the situation where sigma x is less than sigma y and tau xy is positive. Okay, so I'll just draw these arrows coming out. They can be in or whatever. Um, but uh, tau xy is going to be positive. Now, when I do that, when I plot my points, if I have a positive shearing stress, my x point is going to land to the left of the center. So maybe this will be my x point over here. And this will be my y point over here. 
Okay, so here's my original x and y axes. From this axis to the horizontal is 2 theta p. And notice which direction I'm going. Now, I don't mean up or down. I mean clockwise or counterclockwise. In this case, it is clockwise. So over here on this picture, from my x-axis, I'm going to go clockwise. Angle theta p. My principal stress state. But now this x point traveled to this position, which is the average minus the radius position. It's the sigma p2. So that's sigma p2, and this is sigma p1. The y point, you can see, traveled to position sigma p1. If I want to reverse course, let's use a different color, and I want to go from the principal stress state down to the bottom of the circle to get my maximum shearing stress state. Okay, so first I went clockwise. Now I'm going to go counterclockwise, 45 degrees from the principal stress state. I have sigma average all the way around. And maybe pause the video in a second, and you figure out whether that arrowhead should be on the top of the block up here or on the bottom of the block right there. All right, pause the video, think about it, and then uh, we'll go over that question. All right, so the question was, which side does the arrowhead go on? Well, I started out with a positive shearing stress, and I have stayed on the same side of the axis as which I started from, so it remains positive. Positive shearing stress points in the positive y direction on the positive x face. So I have one, I have them all. All right, if I would have reversed course, this would be 90 degrees. This would be 45 degrees. There would be my coordinate axes. Um, if I would have continued on and gone up to the top, okay, I would have sigma average all the way around. And now I switch from a positive to a negative shearing stress. I would have my shearing stress in the negative direction. So it would point down that way. But in the global sense, both of those arrows are in the same direction. All right, let's do the very last combination, and we'll have everything covered for 2D more circle. Let's talk about the case where sigma x is less than sigma y, but tau xy is negative. So our tau xy starts like this. Now, here's the center of our circle. The way that would plot would be the x point would be over here. The y point would be right there. In order to get to the principal stress state, we would go this way, 2 theta p. That would be in a counterclockwise sense. Now this gets to be a little tricky. From my x-axis, that would be in this direction. Because okay? the direction is counterclockwise. And in this case, my x went to the smaller of the two principal stresses. So that's sigma p2, and this becomes sigma p1. If I continue on in the same sense of rotation, I will have changed the sign of the shear. You can think of the sigma axis as an axis that changes the sign of the shearing stress when we go rotate around it. 45 degrees from the principal stress state. Notice I'm putting my coordinate system in on all these blocks. I have sigma average all the way around. And I start with a negative shearing stress, but now I'm on the bottom where it's a positive shearing stress. I crossed over the axis, it changes the sign. So it looks like that. If I had reversed course, if I first went to the here and then I went up to the top. Well, then I would keep the same sign of the shearing stress as I started with because I did not cross over the axis. In order to know the sign of the shear, you got to draw that coordinate system in. We have sigma average all the way around. And let's see, I started with a negative shearing stress, and I am keeping a negative shearing stress. So the negative shearing stress really points in that direction. 
and it's the same direction as I had in that picture. So whichever way you decide to rotate your block, all I have to do is look at my picture for the solution and know whether or not you've done it correctly. All right, I hope that's cleared up um, some of the uh, issues with the direction of the shearing stress arrow on 2D Moore Circle. Um, I have a lot of examples with numbers worked out on the integrity video section if you're if you're in my course. So I do encourage you to look through that. And I try to say all of this at the same time for that particular problem as I do that as well.